first of all, this is the Deacon Lee Adams Show, and we are um, on uh, 1490 on your AM dial here in the city of Cleveland, Ohio. And my guest, my beautiful guest, is Israel United in Christ. And Israel United in Christ, wanted to tell them your phone numbers and your call letters of where you are? Yes, sir. Uh, we're Israel United in Christ. We're an organization uh, founded in 2003. We have uh, hundreds of locations throughout the United States and throughout the world. Uh, you can find us at IsraelUnite.org on the Internet. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Just type in IUIC. You can call us at 855-484-4842, extension 707. Okay, okay, that's beautiful. Uh, we'd like to say that IUIC has a class going on this Sunday at 2 o'clock to 4 o'clock. In the city of East Cleveland, the address is 154449 uh, Euclid Avenue. Hope to see you there. I will give you this information at the end of the program. Uh, Israel Night in Christ, um, I would like to say something first before you get started. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Uh, on the news this past week, they've been talking about reparation for uh, people who were bought over in slave ships for black folks or so-called Negroes. And um, I saw in the news where Mitch McConnell made his statement that uh, nobody's at fault, if I'm paraphrasing it right, nobody's at fault, nobody's living now was here when that was going on, and the people that are living in this generation had nothing to do with what happened in the past. And I want my people to know, those of you who believe in the Bible, and those of you that know how to read a Bible, to go to your Bible and to the book of Joel and read chapter 23. When you read chapter 23, uh, all the people that uh, feel that uh, that we uh, are, are going to get compensation for being brought over in slave ships, which uh, the people who brought us over here are not going to give us that reparation. They're not going to give us that. Not in our lifetime. But we will get reparation. And when we read the book of Joel, it brings out the fact that we will get reparation because God Almighty is going to make it happen. So if you read your Bibles and you turn to the book of Joel, chapter 3, it says this, For behold, in those days, in that time, when I shall bring again the captive, captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, and I will also gather the nations, and I will bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat, and I will plead with them there for my people and for my heritage, Israel, whom they have scattered amongst the nations and parted my land. The only people who are scattered amongst the nation is the nation of Israel, and they are here today. Some, Many of them are here in the Western Hemisphere. They're called colored people, Negroes, Haitians, uh, Puerto Ricans, Mexicans, American uh, Indians. Our names have been changed. And when we read this Bible, it brings out the fact of who we are in history but reading on to verse uh, 3 for they have cast a lot for people and have given a boy for a harlot and sold a girl for wine that they might drink we were given as harlots and we were sold we were sold we were used and abused and we were sold and God brings this out yea and what have ye to do with me O Tyra and Zidon and all the coasts of Philistine Will you recommend me a will you render me a recommend? And if ye recommend me swiftly and speedily, will you return your recompense upon your own head? Because they have taken my silver and my gold and have carried into into your temples my go, my good pleasant things. Verse six: The children of, also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians that ye might remove them far from the borders. The Grecians are your Caucasian race of people. So Mitch McConnell and the rest of the people that are in power right now who have no intentions of giving us uh, retribution, don't worry about it and don't trouble your mind. Just keep on doing what you're doing because according to the Bible, God says that he will make it happen and he will make it happen. To those that keep his laws and commandments, he will make it happen for Israel. He will bring Israel so-called colored people, Native Americans and Spanish people, he will bring us back to our homeland again. This is something that I don't know, most churches don't bring out, but you do, you will be 
will be, you will be repaid for what you've gone through here in this country. All right, I, I, I see you want to go ahead? All right, all right, all right. So once again, uh, for those that are listening in, uh, we are Israel United in Christ. We teach that the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are the children of Israel. You're not black, you're not Hispanic, you're not Negro, you're not colored, you're not African American, you're not Negro American. Uh, you are none of those. You are none other than the children of Israel, God's chosen people. So today's topic, we're going to go over, um, it's, t- it's called We See You. We're going to go into the uh, very, very breathtaking and uh, uh, drama-filled documentary of the um, Central Park Five. Did you get a chance to see it, Miss Israel? No, I never really saw that documentary. I just know okay. that they are supposed to have gotten uh, compensated uh, a few million dollars for for, right. for for what they went through, and that our president Donald Trump uh, feels that there were uh, bad people or good people on both sides, as right. he say. You know, yeah. he has no respect for uh, for us anyway. Go right. ahead. Right. So, so when you watch and you see what happened, it was five innocent men that spent their childhood, their childhood was taken from them, and it was spent in prison. And what we're going to do is we're going to show you why this happened and why it will continue to happen, and we're going to give you a solution to the problem of why this happens to our people and why does it only happen to us? Why is it always black, Hispanic, Native American men that have their childhood and adulthood taken from them while being in the American justice system? We're going to show you why. Because a lot of people were angry. When you go on Twitter and you go on Instagram, a lot of our people voiced their opinion about what was going on. But when the Israelites show you in the scriptures that this man that you love and that America, the country that you love, we tell you these things, you don't believe us. But it takes for stuff like this to be shown and broadcasted for us to wake up. So we're going to continue to read the Bible, and now I pray that you can connect the dots when you see the visual aid of what our oppressors have done to us. So we're going to start off with John chapter 8 and verse 32. The book of John, chapter 8, verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So the Bible says that ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Here in America, we are still not free. We are still slaves. Why? Because we have not subjugated ourselves to the truth of the Bible. The truth is that we must keep God's law, statutes, and commandments. You are not going to change a system that was set up to oppress you. Understand that. Your voting, your marching, your rising will not change uh, the land where you were brought here as slaves. A land where the writings in the law books say that you are three-fifths of a man. That is not going to create change by you voting for different politicians. President, uh, city councilmen, uh, 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 and so on and so forth. Those things will not lead to change. The only change is Christ. All right? So we're going to go back because I know we haven't been on for a while. So I want to make sure we understand who we are. We are the Israelites. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. I'm going to show you why the Central Park Five was arrested with no evidence, no witnesses, Nothing. They had nothing against them, and they still served time in jail. Everybody knew it was wrong, and it still happened. I'm going to show you why. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. But it shall uh-huh. come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command uh-huh. thee this day, that all uh-huh. these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So... The Bible says that curses was going to come upon the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans for the breaking of God's law. Understand that. And guess what these were called? These were generational curses. These curses, are we are still under those curses to this day because we continue to remain in sin. Those young men didn't do anything wrong that night, but because us as a nation, we continue to remain in sin, they felt the curses in their personal lives. So, let's read verse 16. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed so shall thou be says, in the city. The Bible says that the biblical Israelites were going to be cursed in the city. 
where do we see nine times out of ten, where do we see a young man being picked up and taken into jail, being arrested for no reason, being shot dead? Where is this happening? In the cities. In the cities. In the cities, in ghettos, and slums across America, in Cleveland, in Cincinnati, in Toledo, in Chicago, in New York, in Queens, in, uh, in L.A. Wherever you can find a city, guess what you'll find? You'll find a ghetto, you'll find a slum. And who will you find there? The Israelites. All right. And once again, while you listen, if you're listening in, you can call us at 216-578-1490. We would love to hear from you. If you agree, disagree, if you saw the documentary, I want to hear your viewpoint from a biblical stance. I would love to hear your viewpoint while, we, while we're discussing this. So the Bible says, curse shall thou be in the city. Let's go to the book of Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 3. I'm going to show you how we were cursed in the city in a few ways, really quick. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 1, verse 3. The uh -huh. ass knoweth his owner, and the ass is master's crib. But uh -huh. Israel does not know. My people does not consider. So in the cities across America, the Israelites have lost their identity of who they truly are. We have learned to worship a God that does not look like us. We have been uh, indoctrinated with doctrines of the Bible that are not uh, sound. We have learned to love our oppressors. We have learned to envy our oppressors. And we learned to hate our own selves. The number one killer of black men and black women are black men and black women. That, those those, those uh, statistics should be alarming to our people, but it's not. You would think with all the oppression, the slavery, the Jim Crow law, so on and so forth, that our people would gather together and love one another. But that's not what's going on. Why? Because we suffer from systematic oppression. And the Bible goes into that as well. So one thing that I want to hit on real quick, how are we cursed in the city? The black man is absent in the city that calls America. Why? Because the system is not set up to, to have black men around. Go to Isaiah 3 and 12. And what happens as an effect of that? These young men are raised by their mothers. And I'm going to show you what God says happens. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 12. As for uh, my people, children are their oppressors. And he, women rule over them. So in oh, the, my city, people. The, Bi the Bible says that children have become our oppressors. That is why it is so easy to label these young black men, Kevin Richardson, Corey Wise, uh, Yusef Shalom, so these five men. It was very, very easy to label them as animals, as menace to society. Why? Because throughout the cities and ghettos and slums, we, that, is, that is what we have become. We have become what? Gang bangers, drug dealers, murderers, very, uh, very violent towards one another. Read that again, uh, Yaziel, verse 12. As for my people, children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. So it says children are their oppressors. Children are their oppressors, and women rule over them. But they don't go into why these women are ruling over them. It's because the system has been set up to take the black man out of the household. Why? Because I think it's over 80% of our households don't have a man. But they don't account for what happens in the justice system. That our men are being taken off the streets, having done nothing, and thrown in prison, as we've seen with what happened in the Central Park Five. And what happens? These children grow up without Father. Go to uh, Baruch chapter 3 and verse 8. Just a moment. So these did, are some did, of the... Didn't uh, Beyonce say uh, girls rule the world? Right. <laughs> so, yeah. exactly. I'm back here. Exactly. to be the servant of God. All right. How anyway. you doing, Sister Saeed? Right. I ain't I heard you from in a while. Here with me. One of the, so, one of you got the, that, Baruch? Go ahead and read. Read that. The book, of, the book of Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. Behold, uh -huh. we are yet this day in our captivity. So the Bible Where says that the Israelites are still in captivity. Why? Read. Where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse. Thank and you. to be subject to payment according to all the iniquities of our fathers. 
So the Bible says that we are subject unto payments because God says that we're above all nations. But how are we subject to payments? We still have to pay rent. We have to pay car insurance. We have to pay phone bills, light bills. We have to pay mortgage. We have to pay taxes. So you are still subject to payment. That makes you what? A slave. You are not free as long as you're subject unto payment. Let's go back to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28. Now let's jump to verse 29. 28. And then we're going to start at 28. 28 and 28. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 28. The Lord uh -huh. shall smite thee with madness uh -huh. and blind and astonishment uh -huh. of heart. And stop, thou shalt go up at noon. So the Bible, the Bible says that he was going to smite us with blindness. With blindness, madness, and astonishment of heart. When you watch this documentary and you feel the pain of those brothers that no, they did not do anything wrong than what they were convicted of. And you see what happens to their family. You see they're torn from their sons. And you see them torn from, from, from these children, 14, 15, 16-year-olds, being thrown in prison, the prison system. And you see, why does this happen? Read that again, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness, and astonishment of heart. And what happened? Us as a nation, we have been smited with astonishment of heart. We wonder, why would this happen? Why do these things continue to happen? Because it didn't end. You think about Khalif Browder. You think about Trayvon Martin. You think about Tamir Wright. You think about all these different instances where our brothers and sisters are done wrong at the hands of our oppressors. And you say, why does this happen? Why is this continuing to happen? If God loves everybody, why are we the only people that are being subjugated to this type of behavior? Why? It's because you are the children of Israel. Because it's hard time that you'll wake out of sleep. Read verse 29. Verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. And thou shalt not Read. prosper in thy ways. Uh -huh. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore and no man shall save thee. So it says that we were only going to be spoiled and oppressed. Is that not the black man here in America? Why are we still stating Martin Luther King's dream in 2019? Has this not been made a reality yet? It's because, guess what? His dream will never come true in a land where you were put to, 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 to serve as punishment. This is not the promised land. This is not the mountaintop. This is a place of punishment. Until our people wake up and understand that, we will continue to be confused. We will continue yes. to have an astonishment of heart. Yes, there understand is. that. Thank you, thank you. There, that well, is definitely, well, definitely something to think about. Something to think about. Why are we going through these curses? Um, however, there's got to be an end to it. The, the curse, there will be an end to this curse someday. And we have to wake up first. But I, I do know, I do know that the, in, the, you know, when you don't do right by God, the enemy comes in. But we have a break, and uh, we All gotta right. come back. So once again, oh, uh, oh, right oh, now oh, we'll be wait, 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 wait. Right. I, I, right. I apologize. We had a caller on the line already. Okay. So we're gonna get right. to the caller first. All right. Go ahead, caller. Israel, can you hear me? Okay. Yes, sir. We turn. Okay, so. I want you to I want you to go back to something you said when you were comparing having to pay taxes in this country with um, biblical slavery and still being a slave. Could you could you better elaborate on how you draw that conclusion? Uh, good, good, good. So, oh, I, I asked it real fast. So, your question was, how do we compare biblical slavery to us paying taxes? Understand? No. When you, no the, okay, go I ahead. Want, go ahead. No, the question is, the question is, how do you draw the conclusion? of the two being the same, biblical slavery and paying taxes as being slavery in this country today. Gotcha. All right. So, understand, we were set up to be kings upon the face of the earth. When you go to the book of Matthew, go to Matthew chapter 17, uh, from the, uh, Oceaziel, and I'm going to show you something. The Bible, we were not set up to serve and pay taxes. When you are in a rulership position, there's two positions. 
You are a king or you are a slave and a servant. If we are paying taxes, we are not in the position that we were set up to be in, which means we are what? In a state of servitude. Read that, verse 24, 17, 24. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 24. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? He, uh -huh. he said, Yes. And when he was coming to the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? Of whom do the kings of the earth take custom or tribute? Of their own children or strangers? Three. Peter saith unto him, Of strangers. Jesus saith unto him, Then are the children free. Jesus Christ himself understood when the Israelites are enforcing taxes on other nations, that is when they are in a free state. That is when they are liberated, and that is when they are no longer captives. But here in America, we think because everybody else pays taxes, we're free. We have lost the mindset of who we truly are. So I pray that answers your question, uh, caller. Did the answer but the taxes pay for services. I, I, get I get that. I get that. And the poor under a certain economic income don't pay taxes, even if they're employed. Neither do they the do. rich pay taxes. They pay well, the rich taxes. Do pay taxes. So, I mean, like, hey. No, they don't. No, yes, they, they don't. do. No, they, they, may don't. Not, they may not all pay income tax, but they pay sales tax, property tax, and things such as right. that. But, but listen, and all of those things are set up to fuel what? The same justice system that I'm speaking about right now. But understand, I want to get back to the topic, but I answered your question. As okay, I want, I, want to know how you drew, I want to know how you drew your conclusion, and you gave it to me. That's good enough for me. All right. All right. All right. All right. All praise. Thank all you, praise. Carl. I appreciate you all in there. Thank you. I'm tired of some time. All praise. That brother's a uh, loyal listener. I appreciate him for calling. Yeah. I, can, I can recognize his voice. All we, praise we, to the whole side. Mr. Todd. I'm I was just thinking about him, just with the ask me. Hey, we, we, are, we, are, we also um glad that, you know, we turned. We also... um. Would like for anybody else to call in at two one six five seven eight fourteen ninety. You have you have a right to uh, express your opinion, and he can give you an answer straight from the Bible, and you know um, it was this continuous. As as yes, it's is not it's knowledge. It's just really something to think about that you really don't find expressed uh, or talked about uh, into this in this manner in the church. So all right, um, so I'm good to go. Yeah. You're good to go. All right, good. We're, like I said, we're speaking about the Central Park Five. The title of the class is "We See You." So now we're going to go into we're going to go into the justice system here in America. The Bible outlines what happens to us and why it happens to us, and we're going to go into it scripturally because a lot of times the reason why we have a statement of heart, the reason why we're groping at noon day as if it's dark, is because we don't understand why these things happen. But the Bible outlines all of it. Go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 42, and verse 22. I'm going to show you something very, very important. Because the so-called uh, African American and Native American and Hispanics, they call us minorities. Yet, when you go into the prison system, you understand that we outnumber every other race on the face of the earth inside of the prison. Why is that? Let's see. Read that. The book of Isaiah, chapter 42, verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They uh -huh. are all of them snared in hope, and uh -huh. they are hid in prison houses. Read. They are for a prey, and none deliver it. For uh -huh. spoil, and none saveth, saith, restore. So it says they are hid in prison houses. There are thousands upon thousands of cases where our brothers and sisters are locked up and are innocent. There's no eyewitness. There's no evidence. And guess where they're sitting? They are sitting in prisons and jails because they cannot afford the bail money to get out. Because why? They are oppressed here in America. Understand. Read that scripture again, please. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 22. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none deliver, for a spoil and none saith restore. It says they are for a prey and none deliver it. There was something that passed uh, right when we got out of slavery. There was something called the Black Code, 
and there was something called Jim Crow laws. And then they had stop and frisk all the way up until today. All of these different writings that are written, who are they targeting? They are targeting so-called blacks and so-called Hispanics. And guess what? When they are wrongly convicted, nobody stands up and says, this is wrong. We need to restore these brothers and sisters of their rights and of their injustices that were done against them. We need to give them uh, reparations or create settlements for the individuals. A lot of times that stuff does not happen. And if, and if it does, it happens 20, 30 years later after the brothers and sisters' lives are destroyed. There's no amount of money that can pay back the memories of a teenage child. How can you replace uh, uh, going to a ball game with your father with being harassed by a prison guard at the ages of 16 and 17? There's nothing that can undo those experiences. Understand that. But guess what? Our oppressors, the so-called white man, could care less, and the Bible outlines that. Go to the book of Zechariah chapter 11 and verse 5. I'm going to show you exactly the mindset of these people that continue, that continue to allow this system to go on day after day, year after year, conviction after conviction, and they don't say anything about it. Nobody can. They say this is, this is the way it's set up. Read that. The book of Zechariah chapter 11 verse 5. Who uh -huh. possessor slay them and hold themselves not guilty. So, Paul, it says, whose possessor slay them and hold themselves not guilty. There's a point in this documentary where there's a brother that admits that he did the whole crime himself. And what does the, the district attorney and the detective say? They say, well, this is a six, um, a six member of the crime. Not one point could they ever admit that they were wrong with the conviction that they had on these young men. When you go through, the brother continued to go to parole boards. I never knew this before I watched the documentary. All they want you to do is admit that what you did was wrong. Right. They want mm -hmm. you to admit that you were wrong and mm -hmm. you take a plea bargain. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Because they would never admit that what they did was incorrect. They can't do it. They're not built like that. Read that scripture again, mm -hmm. folks. Zechariah chapter 11, verse 5. Whose possessors slay them and hold themselves not guilty. And they that Read. sell them say, Blessed be the Lord, for I am rich. And their own shepherds pity them not. And our own shepherds pity us not. Because what do we do? We continue to see the oppression of our people. And what do our preachers and pastors do every four years? We jump behind a different political candidate and we say, This person will lead to change. Why is that? Because we have fallen asleep. We have not opened up the Bible and realized we cannot walk hand in hand with our oppressors to create change. It's time for us to come together and keep God's laws, statutes, and commands. Go to the book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, comment. and verse 6. Go ahead and do that and not make a comment. All right, Jeremiah 50 and 6. I'm going to show you why they hold themselves not guilty. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 50, verse 6. My uh -huh. people have been lost sheep. Uh -huh. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They yeah. have turned them away on the mountain. They have gone from the mountain to the hill. They have forgotten their resting place. We have forgotten our resting place here in America. We think that this is our rest. We think that New York, Queens, Bronx, Atlanta, Detroit, Miami, we think these are our hometown. Read verse 7. Verse 7. All that found them have devoured them. And their adversaries said, We offend not, because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their father. You see that? It says that they said they have sinned not because we have sinned. These other nations feel that they can do whatever they want to to us because we have sinned against our God. And to some extent, they are right. But guess what? God is going to judge these nations for their wrongful doings against the nation of Israel. They were only set up to do a certain level of punishment. But the system that they have set up against us was not in line with the Bible. All right? Before we go to the next scripture, you have something you want to say, uh, Sister Sai? Yeah, I'm sure that people would wonder, why would God have, um, you know, these young men or suffer like that, you know, and, and, and be 
pretty much demoralized. We're going to get demoralized. Yeah. And, yep. and, you know, what I do you know, as, as an experienced um, person who has been seeking for righteousness all my life, I do know that when you, the more you try to seek God, the more the enemy wants to try to tear you down. So you really have to fight Absolutely. that. You have to, you have to, you have to face the enemy. You have to learn how to face that enemy. Because sometimes the enemy wants to take the blessing of God from you. Wants to take all that God had meant for you from you. And, and have, have pretty much uh, exerting a right to over your, try to exert a right over your soul. And wants to be a part of your soul if you if you let them because the spirit is really strong it's like a, I, I was talking on another show about this uh, how the enemy gets inside sometimes animals and and and, and uh, affect them to where they're doing evil things but you 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 know when you as long as you stay righteous and strong and and uh, uh, for God, the enemy can never be a part of that soul that he has, that you're supposed to have, supposed to purify, purify before God. So we have to purify our souls as a people, as a group of people, as a community. The, the, the stronger we are in purifying ourselves, the more powerful the Spirit of God will uh, come to, to wipe out Absolutely. all the evil. Wipe Absolutely. out all the evil. Absolutely. Absolutely. We yeah. have to keep the commandments. Mm -hmm. That's the, and, and what you said is exactly right. Go to Psalm 64 and verse 1. So as we continue, we're examining the justice system, and we're showing you the plots that they have against us, and we're showing you what the Bible already tells you what's going to happen when we stray away from God's law, when we stray away from the commandments of how to love our brothers and sisters. Read that. The book of Psalm, chapter 64, verse 1. Hear my voice, O God, in my prayer. Preserve my life. From the fear of the enemy. Uh -huh. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. From the insurrection of the workers. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. When you go, this was just one case. And it shows you how far your enemy will go to blame, point blame on you. They will take five innocent men and corroborate stories that do not even line up and place you in a courtroom and say guilty. That is what they will do. And that's why David prayed that we don't fall into the hands of our enemy. Keep reading. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Read, oh. wet their tongue like a sword, and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. So, stop right there. It says, suddenly do they shoot at them and fear not. Because they understand. The, the, the God of the, of the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native American man is the white man. We believe that our oppressors are really out for us, for our good. Like the brother that just called in. He said, well, the taxes that we have, it goes back to health. They give us welfare. They give us Medicaid. They give us school systems. These things are pennies to the white man. He runs the earth. It's nothing for him to give you rent free. He owns the building. He got 400 years of free labor. It's nothing for him to rent out millions of houses out to single parent households. When guess what? All of those young men are going back into the prison system. When they have to pay for jail. When they have to pay $23 for a phone call home. When they're working for their corporations for 50 cents an hour. That's nothing, but we don't look at it like that. Read verse 5. Verse 5. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. Uh huh. They, they, they commune with laying snares privily. They say, uh -huh. Who shall see them? They, they search say, out and they Who shall see them? They say, Who shall see them? And that's why this movie, this documentary is so powerful. Because for the first time in a long time, our brothers and sisters are able to see. The wickedness of your oppressors right in front of your eyes. And you're going to have to ask yourself a question. Am I going to continue to believe in the narrative that was pushed to me by my oppressors? And I'm going to believe in the Bible. And I'm going to see what it says about this man who I love. Cesar Borgia and all of his uh, counterparts that are on the face of the earth. You're okay. going to have to question Okay, well, oh, yes, thank you so much. And uh, uh, when you get back, I want you to repeat that verse about the shooting, shoot at them if, if the you're not, if they're not, the last verse. And we want to uh, show you from a biblical standpoint 
why these things happen and continue to occur is because we are the Israelites and we are suffering from the curses that are written of in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. The Bible outlines every injustice that is done against us through the political system, through the judicial system, through the education system, through the social welfare system. Every system is set up to oppress us. And we're only going to come out of that by keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments. Read that. I didn't read it to a 20. The book of Isaiah, chapter 51, verse 20. Thy sons have fainted. They lie at the head of all the street. As a wild bull in a net, they are full of the fury of the Lord, the rebuke of thy God. So it says, our young men are like a wild bull in a net. What net is that speaking about? The net that it's speaking about is the system, the prison system that is set up here in America. Because guess what? If you are convicted, no, not even if you are convicted, if you are arrested of a crime and you are innocent, if your family is not financially fit to post bail or post a bond, guess where you're going to wait? You are going to wait in a jail cell or a prison somewhere here in America. And you are going to be subject to some of the most brutal treatment that you can find on the face of the earth. Some of these places where our people are housed at, is worse than Guantanamo Bay. And Guantanamo Bay was closed down for what happened. So what are we saying? We're saying that the children of Israel must repent and come back to God's law, statutes, and commandments. But the net, the net is this system that we believe in and we trust in. How do I know we believe in it and trust in it? Because every two years, Every four years, we gather ourselves together behind a different political faith, and we vote for change. But we never want to change our actions. We never open up the Bible and say, I'm going to put on a dress. I'm going to stop eating pork. I'm going to keep the Sabbath day holy. I'm going to wear fringe. That is where our answers lie. Go to the book of Lamentations, chapter 4 and verse 17, because we see it time and time and time again. Our people put our hope in this justice system, believing that justice is going to be served, and it never comes through. And if it does come through, it comes through at the expense of 20 to 30 years of our lives gone, or three or four or five years of our lives gone. And guess what? No amount of money can take back the time that is lost. Read that. The Book of Lamentations, chapter 4, verse 17. As for us, our eyes have yet failed for our vain help. In our watching, we have watched for a nation that could not save us. We have watched for a nation. What nation? America. We have watched for a nation that could not save us. Time and time and time and time again, we put our trust in a judge, in the gavel and a prosecutor, and we think that things are going to be better this time, that, you know what, there's no evidence. You know what, this politician can change. This president can change. And guess what? We keep seeing that this nation cannot save us. How long do we have to be here to realize that? We've been free since 1865. We just celebrated Juneteenth uh, two days ago. And yet, our people are still... We still have to be taught how to deal with the police. We still have to worry. We have to raise our children in fear. And under, they have to understand that they're not treated the same way as other people because of the color of their skin. This is the reality of it. It is not because you're black. It's because you're an Israelite. Understand that. From there, go to the book of Hosea chapter 5 verse 16. So now we want to try to come to a close. We want to show you why these things must happen. Because that was a great question you asked. Is, why does this happen? These young men didn't do anything. Why does this thing happen and continue to happen? Why was Trayvon Martin killed? Why was Tamir Rice killed? Why was uh, 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 Eric Garner choked out? Khalif Browder, these things happen. Why? Let me show you why. Read that. The book of Hosea, chapter 5, verse 15. I will uh-huh. go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my faith. In their affliction, they will seek me out. So the Bible says 
the Most High God was going to go and return unto his place until the children of Israel were able to acknowledge their offense. We have to admit that we were wrong for eating pork. We have to admit that we were wrong for celebrating Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, a woman wearing pants, a men being whoremongers. All these various things that we have, our eating habits, we can't eat pork, trip, crab, lobster. Until we admit that these things are wrong and get the pride off of us, God is going to continue to afflict us. God is going to continue to show us that he's going to take innocent children and place them in prison to be an example to you, to you young men and young women that are free, that do have rights and are able to go and study the Bible and are able to go out and repent of your sin. He's going to continue to afflict us because the children of Israel are hard-headed and stiff-necked. The only way we hear is when we are oppressed. It's when things are bad. That's when we wake up. If everybody in America, here in America, had money and they had status, nobody would care about God. How do we know? Look at your pastor and preachers. They don't care about the people. They're not on the corners and street corners teaching our people. They're not in building houses and setting people up for, for success after, after they come into the body. They're not doing that. They're worrying about their self and their own gain. From there, go to the book of Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. Acts chapter 3 and verse 19. What must we do? How do we, how do we come to a solution to the problem? Read that. The book of Acts chapter 3 verse 19. Repent uh-huh. you therefore and be converted that your sins so may Bible, be blotted out. Good. The Bible says repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Because understand, as long as we continue to live our lives outside of the Bible, we leave ourselves open to all the different injustices that are out there for us to fall into. We leave ourselves open for the political trap. We leave ourselves open for the, uh, the prison system. We leave ourselves open for the education system. All these different things that are set up to oppress us and confuse us and to keep us in a state of questioning, why is this happening? Why me, God? Why me? We're going to continue to see mothers crying before the judge, asking why, Lord, why? We're going to continue to see young men shot dead in the streets until we repent of our sin. Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. What must we do as a nation? As a nation. And when I say a nation, I'm not talking about America. I'm talking about the nation of Israel. I'm talking about the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. All those scattered throughout the four corners of the earth that suffer the effects of oppression. All right? Listen good. The book of Zephaniah, chapter 2, verse 1. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not decide. So, the Bible says that we must gather ourselves together. How must we gather ourselves together? Underneath the banner of the Bible. If you are tired of seeing the things that are happening to your people, if you're tired of seeing your brothers and sisters across the world being in the ghettos and slums, if you're tired of having the worst education systems throughout the, throughout the United States and throughout the world, if you're tired of seeing your people shot dead, your people not getting justice, you must repent and you must gather yourselves together. Bring your talent and skill set into the nation of Israel. Join an Israelite organization that is going to teach you God's law, statutes, and commandments. We have tried the Christian church. We have tried the nation of Islam. We have tried Mormonism. We have tried the Baptist church, the Pentecostal church. And the same problems are still present in our neighborhood. Until we wake up and come back to our true nationality as the children of Israel, we will continue to be oppressed here in America. For now, go to, go to Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 7. Just because a minutes. lot of people... Huh? Two minutes. All right, gotcha. A lot of people were upset with what happened when they saw this documentary. They were upset when they saw what happened to Eric Garner. They were upset when they see uh, police officer after police officer after police officer get off 
with 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 murder. This is what God says. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter seven verse seven. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. So the Bible says oppression maketh a wise man mad. So if you're mad, you have right to be. But understand, we gave you the solution. Join Israel. Come back to your nationality. Come back to God's laws. Once again, we're Israel United in Christ. You can find us on the internet at israelunite.org. You can call us at 855-484-4842, extension 707. You can find us on YouTube, IUIC in the classroom, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Just find me at IUIC. If you see purple and gold, that is us. All right? So I thank you for having us on. Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.